after all the years of men telling women to pick better, the women have. They're just not picking you. You're not the better choice. When she thinks about her low stress, rich auntie lifestyle, she would rather pick that than join you in struggle love. You gotta keep me happy because I will cheat. Well, 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 well. Oh, okay. What is the target? Whoever can pay them bills, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Whoever can give you what you want, pay them bills. You make sure you ain't got to work if you don't want to, etc., etc. So this is the star of the video today. Her name is Sherrelations. I featured her on a channel before, but I've been looking at some of the comments and people have been describing her as the female Andrew Tate. Now, I find her hilarious. I'm laughing already. I find her hilarious. I don't know if this is satire or if this is real because... I can't take her seriously. But be prepared because you're going to see her every other clip in this video. These passport predators are the bottom of the barrel. And the reason they're going overseas to get women is because we don't want them. Not you, auntie. Not you. And they know if they go overseas, they're going to, well, they're more likely to find a woman who will do whatever it takes to secure a better life for her family. You can just burn all the food every time you cook nasty. He ain't gonna ask you to cook, okay? It's fine. I I can tell that you're confident in in who you are, and maybe you want to make some changes. But in reality, I don't know why, but women tend to get a little bit um, confrontational or argumentative, or maybe a little bit defensive when men Say give you like. their perspective and yet we want to argue what men want when they're literally telling us over and over what men want perfect she's married y'all <laughs> it's like they're telling us and yes you have some masculine <laughs> traits and a, and a strong attitude and, and you say that when the right man comes along you'll be mm -hmm. feminine but that's that's not true you're not going to give that man the time of day and in reality it takes three seconds to make a first impression some odd number like that and that man is going to immediately disqualify you from wife material feminism has told them that they're better than men so they think that men should think how they think a lot of these women are already past the point that they can be what men want if that makes sense like, a lot of these women are for the streets. Like, let's be honest, the Monday women is for the streets. You can't come back from that, right? A lot of these women are hyper-masculine. And they don't feel like they can be feminine or they have a negative view on what being feminine actually is. So they'll rather argue than change. I'm not getting ready to clean up after no grown man. He clean up his own stuff, okay? I'm like, I clean up my mess. You can hire a maid every once in a while. And we can order DoorDash. You can cook some, but it needs to be your option and choice. You don't. You're not. You're. You shouldn't feel no pressure to have to do something every day. So in the Bible, as most of us probably know, there's different chapters, right? John, Luke, David, Jeremiah, all these. Well, in her caption of the video, there's a there's a book unbeknown to us called Share Relations, right? <laughs> and this is what she said in the caption. Every video has a caption, right? This is what this caption says: Share Relations, chapter two, verse forty. Over here, we don't break our backs cleaning up after a grown man. <laughs> a boss is never going to find a man because she's pretty much an entry-level man. You're responsible for yourself. Congrats, babe. The only kind of man that you're going to attract when you flaunt the fact that you don't need a man, you could take care of everything yourself, you pay all your bills, you have a, and own a business, you can buy every single thing that a man can for you and double it and keep it for yourself, and you take care of your own bills, house, and kids is an authentically trash man that's going to use you until the well runs dry and he runs to the next boss bitch or a leech that's going to use you to build himself up and then leave masculine attracts feminine now i grew up in grenada around poverty surrounded by a lot of single moms single motherhood is a big thing big thing back home and what you would find is a lot of these masculine single mothers were with men who were bums ending up taking care of that man that their men well, liabilities is because they're so masculine. That's what they attract. Now, if you're an alpha woman and you want a beta man so that you can be in charge, by all means, take what applies to you and leave the rest, boo boo. Two alphas cannot coexist peacefully without always fighting for power. Look at any animal kingdom, empire or business structure. It just doesn't end well. And you'd be dumb to think that history repeating itself doesn't apply to your love life. 
all the characteristics that a boss bitch describes is the difference between being a 25 year old boy and a 19 year old man. Most people in Western culture consider you to be a boy if you depend on anybody else for your livelihood. And if for whatever reason that person helping you decides to stop helping you, it drastically affects your livelihood, boy. At any age, that's why you could be a 25 year old boy. But if you flip that, you can have a 19 year old man because you 100% take care of your responsibilities, wants and needs, which is what every person is supposed to do, I fear. Nobody praises a man for owning a business and taking care of kids and paying bills. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are those not all descriptive characteristics of Boston? But that's not what I'm here for. Let me correct my verbiage before y'all lose y'all shit in the comments. A boss bitch is never gonna find a man if she flaunts being a boss bitch. The problem is they can't help it. And this is what I've found. Let me know if I'm wrong. Men show masculinity in a number of different ways. So for example, Andrew Tate. I'm top G, I'm bigger than life, I'm this, I got the Bugatti, I'm all this, right? But you will have masculine men who are laid back, reserved, and just handle business. Don't brag, don't do too much, aren't too flashy, and just go about their business. But with women, they all show their masculinity in the same way, being loud, aggressive, dominant, flexing. So when these women come up, because they're so masculine, they just can't help it, they can't help but tell everyone how great they are. I want someone who shares my spirituality. I want to find someone who um, believes what I believe or I want to find someone who's spiritually in tuned with me and all this kind of stuff. But then when you find them, they be broke. <laughs> Yo, this woman stands for nothing. Like she doesn't stand for religion. She doesn't stand for love. She doesn't stand for nothing but money. Share relations chapter four, verse five. These spiritual dudes be broke as hell. <laughs> oh God. She has no morals. She don't give a damn. Oh, I love it. Kind of daddy issues is what I like to call an overly involved father. Or more specifically, present father physically, but absent masculine presence. I was so happy when I found this video because I've been saying this. For a woman, having a simp as a father is just as bad as having no father because there's going to be no boundaries no respect you're going to see your mom walk all over him and that's how you're going to think men ought to be treated and in my humble opinion and personal experience this one is way worse than the first because the first type born from abandonment is very obvious you can spot all the red flags coming from a mile away but this second type is really tricky and hard to identify in fact, these women look nothing like your typical woman with daddy issues that you've been accustomed to. They look and sound well-balanced, they seem level-headed, and on the outside they seem to have a fantastic relationship with their father. And ironically, as crazy as it sounds, that's the f issue. Follow me on this. It's one thing to have no father growing up in your formative years. It's another thing to have what, in my opinion, would be a misrepresentation of a man for a father in your formative years. These women have daddy issues because their fathers are terrible misrepresentations of masculinity. Although they may have grown up in a two-parent home, they watch their mother use, abuse, disrespect, and belittle their father the entire time. And now are frankly mistaken to believe that this is how all men are. They see men as supplicating spineless submissives and walk through life treating men with that air of arrogance and entitlement. If you ever hear some, my dad is my best friend, that's the kind of woman I'm talking about. I mean, really sit down and think about how wrong this statement is. Your father, if he does his job correctly, should not be your best friend or confidant or buddy or equal. Your father should be your father. A man you look up to for guidance, protection, leadership, and most of all, safety. This is one part of the video that I don't know if I agree with. I don't know if you can't be a good role model, you can't be a strong male figure in your daughter's life and not be her best friend at the same time. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Do they have to be mutually exclusive? I don't think that's the case. A man who has been given the job of teaching you through life from his experience and imparting you with the wisdom and skills to move your way through life confidently. Not your best friend. I can honestly keep going on with this forever because people frankly underestimate how big a problem this actually is. 
As humans, because of our advancements in technology and our ability to tap into our limitless mind, we quickly forget that we too are animals in the animal kingdom. And like my boy Cesar Milan would say, in the animal kingdom, distance and interval equals respect. Space equals respect. That's a shalom impression, but I'm sticking with it. As the father raises his daughter and builds boundaries around her for her own protection, there must also be one, psychologically, that surrounds him, so that she doesn't begin to see her own father as her equal and begin to lose respect for him. Like every other relationship on this planet, the best father-daughter relationships are the ones where the respect is still intact. Unfortunately, from what I've seen over the years, the biggest culprits by far for these very faulty father-daughter relationships she belongs to the streets are the stepfather stepdaughter relationship divorced father is a close second but these ones are like atrocious personally i suspect it's like an overcorrection or overcompensation on the stepfather's part to show as much affection and as little hostility for children that aren't his that he's raising so he ends up spoiling the daughter and becoming her personal doormat which in turn doesn't help her future relationships because like i said before guess what she's going to treat the men in her life like it's a weird weird full circle it's more important money or love answer that please you can't have love without money sprinkle because we all can be in love at under the bridge all right i can't fall in love uncomfortable okay i can't i can't love somebody and i'm not in comfort i can't get comfortable enough to love somebody if i'm worried about money Okay, I'm, I'm worried about how these bills gonna get paid. The lights gonna be on. If I can, I can't sleep at night, baby. On love, love is not gonna help me sleep at night in comfort. Okay, I need the money. <laughs> Four, twelve. Love will come after the money. Stop hiding prostitution under I don't date broke boys. State your price. They will pay you if you are worth it. Peace. We had people write in saying that they always attract the same man. Because you're the same woman. You would like to believe you're not. But like I just said, trying to change trying to change relationships without changing who you are is equivalent to trying to change your address to avoid the mailman from bringing you bills. You're going to go move from uh, Torrance to Beverly Hills and you're going to have a different mailman bring you the same message. Mm -hmm. You went from dating a guy who drive race cars to dating a guy who's a church man but it's both ended in calamity the message is still the same because sometimes it really is you go to therapy reflect on your past mistakes admit that you were the problem if you're in a relationship and you're getting cheated on over and over and over and over again there's got to be a point where you look in the mirror and go wait am i the problem First and foremost, you have to remember that you are a goddess in the flesh and you can't be dealing with no dusties, no dusty hoteps, okay? You can't be dealing with them because they're only going to drag you down if they can't provide for you, if they can't treat you like the goddess that you are. You don't really need their spiritual input anyway if you're a goddess, okay? So remember this, don't take in any homeless hoe tips. Yes, please don't do that. Not even around tax time. Even if they are promising to flip them taxes, don't listen, baby. If you need some spiritual guidance or you feel like you need some spiritual help or you need some spiritual company, read a book, read a book. OK, be your own spiritual company. Watch a video. Do something. Don't go and rush to somebody because they smell like incense and know how to meditate or whatnot. Four eleven. Beware of spiritual dusties. <laughs> Well, the truth of the matter is you don't want a wife. You want a slave. Are they are seeking housemaids and house ladies. Because let's not be obtuse. You're not there to find a wife or a partner. You're there to find a nanny, a cook, and a maid. Want somebody with traditional values, which means that he wants a slave. American Girls, I would like to say we fully support and respect your decision to take your behavior abroad. This was not a difficult decision for us to come to, and we wish you the absolute best in your future endeavors. So yeah, I only have Bumble and Hinge because your girl got banned on Tinder.